here. Um, it's early. It's um, what time is it? Uh, seven thirteen a.m. Eastern Standard Time. I'm watching the Billy Dib versus uh Tevin Farmer card over on um ESPN Plus. But that's not what we're here to talk about. We're here to talk about um, you know, I've been really thinking about doing this for a long time, and um, I talked about it last week. So I want to do something like where. I'm able to like respond to like fan comments and questions and things like that, but only certain questions, you know, throughout the week. So somebody asked me um, or somebody posted was um, who was the last undisputed heavyweight champion? It was Lennox Lewis when he defeated Evander Holyfield. And the re let's go look at it. Matter of fact, so I don't confuse myself. Lennox Lewis, when he defeated Holyfield back in... 1999 and it was for the wbc wba vacant ibo title and the ibf now understand um i understand the history of the ibo but i don't count the ibo for multiple different reasons for example go look at their website um at that point in time, when he had beat Evander Holyfield, you only needed those three belts, the WBC, WBA, and the IBF. At one point in time, it was just the WBC and the WBA when guys like Muhammad Ali was um, undisputed champion. But in this day and age, it has to be said that the first undisputed champion in the four belt era, you see what I'm saying? In the four belt era would be either at this point in time, you know, the guys right now, Joshua, Pavekin, Wilder, Tyson Fury, and Francisco Pianetta, if they, you know, if Pianetta pulls off an upset. Because it's looking like Wilder versus Fury is done. Let me say this. Listen, um, you would have to really have been watching my videos for years, or at least three of my videos on one particular topic to get you know my full opinion on the topic the reason is is because i produce my videos in a saga like format where for example let's go look up um um okay we're gonna do this i've done so many videos on wilder and joshua over the years it's and i'm talking about even before these guys were even talking about you know fighting each other I'm talking about I've been covering in fact I've covered 2020 20, I've covered 20 of Anthony Joshua fights here on YouTube 20 live I'm talking about like, I'm talking about previews and post fight interview I mean post fight videos let's see we're going to do Wilder Povetkin T Street what we're going to talk about here is uh pandering and uh, let's see. Let's go full screen. Now, of course, these are just like recent videos, but let's just keep scrolling and scrolling and scrolling and scrolling. Look, we got a uh, Spielka here. That's me. We got a uh, Pavekin versus Rudachinko. That's me. That's more recent. I want to go back to older stuff so you can guys rumor Wilder will drop WBC title duck pavekin and fight charles martin for ibf title what else you know and and the list the list goes on you see what i'm saying wbc top 15 is stacked wilder to face another voluntary and this was when i was really really critical of wilder at the time you know i guess what i'm trying to do is wilder vs do a pa now this is just it just keeps going it just keeps going this is when i had a. Uh, Talked a while to years ago. This is Pritchard Cullum with RealCombatMedia.com. Your next opponent is your next opponent going to be in, uh, in. I didn't have a voice at the time for like six months. Long story short, I just ended like a eight year long period of being sick. Long, long, crazy, like lifetime movie type story. But I guess the point I'm trying to make is this. Um, I've been doing this for a really, 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 really long time. Now, of course, you're going to see this and say, oh, well, you know, of course, because you're an American and all Americans want Deontay Wilder. You with the LDBC. Listen, 
let me clear some shit up. I got no issues with those brothers in regard to in regards to um, doing what they're doing. But however, I'm entitled to my opinion. I'm entitled to disagree with the way they produce some of their shit. For example, I cover. Oh, shit. I want to make sure I'm not missing this fight. Story to tell, but Beth got a story to tell. It's, it's live right now on ESPN Plus, uh, Billy Dib versus Tevin Farmer. But the thing is, like, listen, I cover all fights. I'm talking about I try my best, and there's so many to make sure I cover every single championship fight. And now, you know, I'm covering the lower divisions. Can't nobody really fuck with me, yo. So understand that I hold no allegiances to no one. I mean, yeah, it may seem like I may be biased towards one fighter or whatever, but that's because you probably only seen one video. In regards to Joshua versus Wilder, listen, I don't disagree with your opinions. Looking at the resume of, of, of Wilder and looking at the resume of Anthony Joshua, Anthony Joshua's resume is better, but yet I'm going to be critical. I'm going to say, well, you know, Vladimir Klitschko was on a two, damn near two-year layoff. I'm going to say, well, look at all that time Deontay Wilder had the chance to fight big names. And when he had first won the WBC title, he fought some shit like three fucking voluntaries or some shit. And this was before the injury. You know, so it's frustrating when I'm lumped in like the middle okay for example right for example go look around okay you have to first separate the youtubers right me i'm in the middle of being a youtube commentator and somebody who is 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 aspiring to um have a legitimate boxing media company in regards to getting people to events and getting people and getting out there you know um a lot of people still tell me in my personal life and i think people don't really understand like um how sick i was early this year i was on my deathbed they were preparing for my departure i was in a coma for 18 19 20 days or some shit i take what i do very seriously i have no day job this is my day job this is my life this is why I'm up six, seven o'clock in the morning watching these fights because I enjoy it. So I put a lot of work into it and I make sure and I've always made sure is that I stick to my guns and I stick to my opinion and I'm not pandering. For example, you know what pandering is? Let's see. Fine. I'll show you what pandering is. I'm going to I'm going to I want a firm definition. No. I want a firm definition. We'll read this one. Pander, gratify or indulge in a moral or distasteful desire, need or habit, or a person with such does not. Nah, that doesn't explain it right. That doesn't explain it right. Someone who caters to the someone who caters to or exploits the weaknesses of others. I guess it's like this, you know. I guess what I'm saying is this. I'm not going to, you know, say shit just because people like me to say it. I'm not going to just wait, wait. Let me see if this fight is starting. This is a free video, by the way. So don't be fucking bitching at me about how this is unprofessional with shit. Big for corporate events and net. I'm covering this fight. This is the next video coming before I start the rest of my videos for the day. But, you know, um. I feel, I strongly, strongly feel that there's a lot of YouTubers who pander to go with the more popular opinion, even though that's not what they fully believe in. I feel that there are YouTubers who say shit and they're literally on YouTube. Now, there's nothing wrong with it. They're literally on YouTube and they're catered to a certain audience because of money. For example, they'll say certain shit because they know that their fan base likes hearing them say that shit. I think I've shattered that time and time and time and time again. You know that that's not how I get down. My opinion will always stand the same as I feel that who's in power, right? Who was in power to make the fight happen? Who could have been like, yo, you know, at the end of the Joseph Parker fire at, or, or told Eddie Hearn, listen, Eddie, I'm not trying to hear none of that shit. Deontay Wilder next, for example. 
Lennox Lewis did. Lennox Lewis did it. Lennox Lewis made sure that nothing got in his way, even though, you know, there was the HBO and Showtime thing with him and Mike Tyson. Nothing got in his way. When Pacquiao versus when Mayweather versus Pacquiao, you know, those networks made sure that I was I was there when they first when it was Ken Hirschman. He was the former president of HBO, HBO Sports at the time. It was at the Klitschko versus Jennings press conference when the shit really, 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 really started popping off. I know that if networks want a fight to be made, a fight is going to be made. Y'all listen. Like, I've been insulted, for example. People say, you know, Tisha, you believe in anything Frank Warren says. You should know that Frank Warren um, um, and Eddie Hearn are sworn enemies. No shit. You be. See, but see, understand that new viewers don't understand that I understand the political, you know, landscape of all these different networks and factions and, you know, promotional groups and managerial groups, advisory groups. Still waiting for this fight to come on. They just showing anything. I'm still waiting for this fight to come on. I guess it's gonna be next. Anyway. Um, what we're looking for here is, for example, I got a podcast coming. I got a clothing line coming out. You know, um, I was saying earlier, I want you to go take a look at your uh most popular YouTubers channels. And I'm talking about where I'm at. This is the point I was making before. Where I'm at is I'm one of the rare YouTubers, boxing YouTubers, rare, one of the rare YouTubers at this level where you see the person, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm here. It's not just, you know, some images and shit on the screen and I'm just fucking clicking through shit, you know, and I'm just like, well, this person is this, this, that, this, that, this, that, and this, this, this motherfucker said this, this, that, you know? This is not even the days of when people used to be like, man, this motherfucker just be going on motherfucking boxing scene and shit, man. You'd be surprised how much, how much, how much like shit has changed, especially when I've always said that you get the biggest news or the most reliable news from the people that are actually with the boxers. I'm talking about people, you know, that are in the boxers' houses for like barbecues and shit. They'd be like, yeah, I overheard such and such saying he was going to be, you know what I'm saying? That's how I be getting my shit and fucking from DMs and all kind of stuff like that. And then Twitter, you know, with the boxers themselves talking that shit, you know. But I'm kind of pissed off that uh, the Tevin Farmer fight is not on yet. You know, since they said it was going to start at 615, no later than they said no later than 730. It's going to be 730. So I hope somebody gets knocked out in this fight so I can go grab some breakfast because I haven't eaten any breakfast yet. And I'm just sitting here, you know, pissed off reading comments but like i said every week you know we're going to do like a little bit of uh answering questions and you know like talking you know about like random shit for example like i said um we're working on getting back out there to uh major events dealing with some um copyright issues right now a potential a potentially big lawsuit obviously that would benefit me but you know just say just say that some real big shit is cooking as you know you know um we're now showing highlights on the channel post fight um copyright free thanks to uh fair use and um some attorney consultation so we're moving we're moving ahead and right now you know my goal is to put out you know four you know videos a day five days a week you know plus and we're accelerating off of that like right now we're putting out a lot of um videos and i want to make sure i keep up this momentum because this is the healthiest i've been even though i'm heavier than i would like to be right now from pretty much having to recover lay around and now i'm trying to get my body and now i'm moving around trying to get my body back to normal because first i had lost 95 what 95 85 95 pounds i forgot the exact number then from me laying, having to learn how to walk again and, you know, laying for good portions of the day, I put the weight back on. So now that I'm walking, we're trying to get back to like, you know, like a normal um, ish weight. But since I'm the healthiest I've been in my adult life, I've had so many distractions over the course of so many years, man, that, you know, I can't put in the words like the deep, uh, the like the, the depression. Then that along with the legal troubles I had, had, you know, all this money tied up in the courts. This right here. Where I'm at right now on YouTube, this is really where I've been planning to be three, four years ago. So, you know, now I'm just trying to capitalize off of this. But let me go and watch this fight. Um, 
you know, you can't please them all. But one thing for sure is, you know, I do take offense when people say, man, this guy's just a hater and all that. Because it's like, yo, I put a lot into this shit, man. Like, saying that I'm a hater for, like, on, like, Anthony Joshua Wilder. Like, for example, in the same video, I'm being accused of being a Wilder hater and a uh, Joshua hater. But I take offense to stuff like that because it's like, yo, I really be like, yo, I don't give a fuck. And the fact that, you know, my American counterparts or a large majority of them are in this clique, this faction that I'm not in, the shit they be spewing snowballs over to my channel. So automatically, you have some Joshua fans or some UK fans come over and they see my shit for the first time and they say, oh, just another, you know, LDBC dude, you know, hating on Anthony Joshua and all that shit. It's like, yo, truth be told, I really don't give a fuck. And the thing is, none of y'all motherfuckers can match me. If we were to really do a boxing debate, and on some real shit, I know I don't talk about it, but if you want to do an old school boxing debate, I've been waiting for somebody. You know what I always thought? I've been thinking this for like, since I probably started on YouTube, that one day I'm going to be confronted by somebody and they're going to ask me some fucking shit about some old ass shit to try to test my knowledge. I'm waiting for you. I'm going to cook you. So, the point is, I know... A lot of people probably just think that I just be doing this just to be, you know, doing this. But no, nah, listen. I want to tell that shit like it is. I want a pure organic boxing program like where then they are really gearing up. When is this fight going to happen? This guy's undefeated. The one with the uh, the braids looking like he from the raid. Yeah, I want to watch this actually, but. I'm sitting here running my mouth, but the things that we have planned going forward with the money that I've put in, you know, throughout the years, you know, and shout out to OJ, you know, over there and the, over there in um, um, Oakland and Kyle, you know, they've been real, real patient. You know, I'm talking about my partners, people who stuck with me when I didn't even have enough money to pay my cable bill, you know, shout out to Rome, former partner, shout out to um, um, Chris. I know we had our differences. You know, over at SMF, uh, Real Combat Media, who actually taught me a lot of this shit. You know, I just ran with it, you know. But now, man, like I look at boxing, like I look at covering boxing so differently. Like, you know, like I'm happy in life. I'm a personal life. You know, like I've been dealing with a custody issue that's almost that's going to be over in about a month or so. You know, I just be like literally like I'm the definition of stay in his lane, stay out the way. You know, I mean, yeah, I'm still a hermit to an extent. But it's not the same anymore. Like I'm living a much. Oh shit! He just got. Did he just get knocked down? It's over. Well, the main event starting soon. What happened? Early on, he would take a few shots and he'd rush his work a little bit. He was dropped by Wade Ryan in a fight. What happened? At the Star in Sydney. That I had the pleasure of calling. Came back and won that one as it went the distance. And well, they mucking around here. Just mm. fires a right hand. Fernandez didn't like it one bit. This is live, by the way. Why just rewind it a little, little bit? When he forgot the, he jumped in the ring. And he forgot oh the no! Uh, well, that is monumentally disappointing from Stevie. Oh Fernandez, no! This is the Tevin former Billy Dib undercard. What? No, what? Hey, he listen, I got to go. You easily have got up. Hey, listen, you guys, I got to go. I'm T-Street Controversy. This is T-Street Controversy Live. Please subscribe.